Hi, I'm Ellen from the Chili Dog. When I'm knitting socks, generally short row shaping is my favorite for constructing the heel. Part of that is because short row shaping is done the same whether you're working the sock from the to top down or in the case of my cubicle socks, from the toe up. And let's look closely at my little heel sample. The general idea for a short row heel is that for the first half of the heel shaping, you're working your heel stitches back and forth in rows and each row is one stitch shorter than the last. And each row ends with some sort of special turning stitch on each side. The rule of thumb is that about a third of the stitches on each side are turning stitches and a third of the stitches at the center of the heel are plain stockinette stitches. Then for the second half of the heel, each of these short rows is one stitch longer than the row before it. And the turning stitches on the side are worked in some way to prevent any holes from forming at the ends of the rows. What you end up with is a diagonal line from just in front of the ankle to down to the bottom back of the heel. The stitches on the first half of the heel are perpendicular to the stitches on the second half of the heel. And there's certainly nothing wrong with that construction. But if you'd like to soften the look of that diagonal line, you can add a couple of transition rounds between the first half and the second half of the heel shaping. However, this does slightly change how the second half of the heel is knit. Let me show you how it works. I'm currently working on one of my cubicle socks and I've already knit the first half of the heel. And I just happen to be using shadow wrapped short row shaping for this heel. So I have these twin turning stitches on each side of the heel at the end of each row. Just as you'd expect, about a third of the stitches on each side are those twin stitches and a third of the stitches at the center of the heel are just plain stockinette stitches. Instead of jumping in and starting the second half of the heel shaping in rows, I'm going to work a couple of transitional rounds. If you're not following a pattern that gives you exact numbers, you'll want to make note of how many turning stitches you have on the side and how many plain stitches you have at the center of the heel. So in my case, I have nine twin turning stitches at the side and nine plain stitches at the center of the heel. So I'll begin working in rounds and I'll start by just knitting across those nine plain stitches at the center of the heel. When I get to my turning stitches, I'll close them in whatever manner is appropriate for the style of turning stitch that I'm using. Since I happen to be using twin stitches, I'll just treat both loops of the twins and as if they were a single stitch. So in this case, I'll just knit those twins together. And then since I'm going to work in rounds, I will rotate my sock and knit across the instep of the sock. Okay. 
at the end of the instep, I'll rotate again. I'm back to the heel side of things. And that counts as my first transitional round. Now I'll knit my second transitional round. Again, I have these turning stitches at the side, so I'll work them together in whatever manner is appropriate. And in my case, again, for twins, it's just a matter of treating the loops, both loops as a single stitch and knitting them together. And then I will continue and I will knit across the remaining heel stitches and the instep stitches until I'm at the end of the round. I made it around and I'm back to the beginning of my heel stitches. So I'm ready to work the second half of the short row heel shaping. So earlier, I noted how many turning stitches and plain stitches I had at the end of the first half of the shaping. And if you remember, I had nine turning stitches on the side and then nine plain stitches at the center. Nine plus nine is 18. And that's how many stitches I'm going to knit across. And that's where my short row shaping will begin. At the end of my first short row, I will go ahead and I'll create another turning stitch. In this case, it's a twin stitch knit, TSK, sometimes it's noted as. So I'll create my turning stitch and then turn my work so I can go in the opposite direction. Now on the wrong side of my work, I'll purl across what was those nine plain stitches at the center of the heel. This is the end of my next short row. So I'll create another turning stitch. In this case, it's gonna be a TSP or a twin stitch purl. And then I will turn my work and go back the other direction. So from this point, each row will be one stitch longer than the previous row. So I'll knit or purl, depending on which side I'm on, to the turning stitch, work that turning stitch however is appropriate. In this case, it'll be knitting or purling those loops together and then make another turning stitch. And I'll continue in this manner until there's just one turning stitch on each side at the ends of the heel. After my heel shaping is complete, I'm left with a turning stitch at the end of my last wrong side row and the turning stitch that was created at the end of my last right side row. And it's time to begin working the sock in rounds for the remainder of the construction. So the only thing special to remember is that you still have the one turning stitch on each side that you need to deal with. And since my turning stitches are those twins, I'll just treat both loops of the twins as a single stitch when I encounter them and knit them together. I hope you enjoyed learning this variation of a short row heel that creates a little bit smoother and softer looking transition between the stitches in the first half and the second half of the heel shaping. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you'd like to support our tutorials or try this technique in a pattern, 
head over to the shop section of thechillydog.com and look for the cubicle socks trio pattern. Until we stitch again, happy knitting!